Hey everyone, I'm Jay Shear, and welcome to another episode of Business Minds Coffee Chat. The goal of this show is to share insights, help to lift and inspire others, and deliver relevant, meaningful, and actionable content. Many of us strive to be healthier, fit, and have more energy. We exercise, we watch what we eat, and we try to make good choices. What we don't always recognize is the importance of good mental health. Our mental health impacts our thoughts, emotions, behaviors, and actions. How we manage stress, stress and anxiety significantly affects our quality of life and our ability to show up and be our best selves. According to a recent Kaiser Family Foundation poll, 45% of adults in the US reported that their mental health has been negatively impacted due to worry and stress over the COVID-19 pandemic. Our guest today is a specialist in the field of mental health and wellness and has been helping to enhance the human experience for over 19 years. Please welcome neuropsychotherapist and life strategist, Liz Villanueva. Liz, welcome. Thank you so much, Jay. That was such a great introduction. I appreciate it. And I thank you so much for having me on. I'm looking forward to having this uh, coffee chat with you. As am I, and it is my honor. So let's jump right in. Can you yes. first give us a general overview of your practice and the areas that you specialize? Absolutely. So um, in my practice, uh, when I first started in the first couple of years, I was really just experimenting and feeling a around as to what would be the best area for me to focus in um, and specialize in. As uh, in mental health, we can see anyone, right? From birth to, to you know death, we can see anyone. So our training provides that. But I find that it's always great to find a specialty to specialize in um, and be a specialist. So when folks are looking for you, they know, oh, Liz, you, you need some help here. Liz can help you. Um, but I do focus on other areas like you've mentioned. So after two years in being in practice, I decided that my specialty was going to be trauma. Uh, because of my personal experiences, um, also because of my background um, in legal case management. So I worked in personal injury for over 12 years. Mm. So I saw personal injury firsthand. I saw trauma firsthand. I saw how people were affected by having an injury and how that kind of affected other uh, dynamics in a family. So I already had I already had the foundation. I had, you know, my own trauma, which was an auto accident over 21 years ago, hmm. and I survived that. And today, I have the honor of working with individuals who have had trauma by auto accident or trauma by other means, because that's painful learning for humans, which that's trauma, and we learn by our experiences. Absolutely. Well, let let's. Let's start then from the beginning. I'd love to hear a bit more about your origin story. So, so take us mm -hmm. back and let, let's talk about where you were raised and what childhood was like and, and where mm -hmm. the interest came from to mm -hmm. jump into the field that you're in today and, and maybe talk about that auto accident a mm -hmm. bit, at least to the yeah. context where it helps you out today and being able to work with, with clients on trauma. Absolutely. So I was born and raised in, in uh, Brooklyn, New York, and I actually relocated to Florida 23 years ago, um, but initially uh, born and raised in, in Brooklyn and um, had a very um, active childhood, um, but there were a lot of things going on, for example, in the inner city that we're exposed to. You don't see a lot of that today, but there's a lot that can be traumatic experiences when you're growing up in that kind of environment. Um, I did have a lot of that very early on. Um, simple things like even going to school, walking to school, walking to school alone back then. And you know, what, what kind of fun things we would encounter on the way to school in Brooklyn, New York. So um, 
that and being around children and knowing that, you know, as a child, as a very young child, I knew that when I grew up, uh, I could have a choice to do whatever I wanted to do. And um, just recently, as about a year ago, um, I thought back to childhood and thought, that what I wanted to do when I was younger in elementary school, I said, I either want to work in the field of psychology or in teaching. Hmm. And today I have just like the honor of doing them both through my practice, which is amazing how that just came around full circle. That is um, so, um, you know, things of things in, in childhood and things having to do with, you know, how, you know, you're raised in that kind of environment and then bringing it back to the accident, um, which was again, 21 years ago, I find myself in a place where, um, even though I'm not the individual that I'm working with, um, and I also believe that there are professionals out there that may have not had trauma to my extent and have the education and they have the experience to deal with trauma. Mm -hmm. I feel that it allows me to connect with individuals and also gives them a sense of security that, wow, Liz, I had no idea, you know, and that's not always disclosed. The only time I disclose that in session is when it's therapeutically relevant. Um, if I find someone's having a hard time, for example, with their accident and they feel there's no future for me because I've had this accident. Mm -hmm. I'm a prime example of how they can have a future. So what were some of the strategies or tactics that you had to employ or that you put into practice that allowed you to move past that and attach different meaning to it so you could become more empowered and be able to help others? Move past the accident? Move past the accident. Yeah, ab absolutely. So I think the awareness component is really important. Like what exactly is happening? A lot of the times fear gets us worked up and then anxiety comes up. And, you know, what we know about human thoughts is 90% of them are negative. We have over 60,000 and 90% of them are negative. Wow. So there's going to be a lot of fear that's produced based on ideas and thoughts, not on facts. So, you know, I always look at what are the facts? What are the facts that I'm being presented with? And for example, going back to my accident, I knew that I had to keep going. I had to survive this. At the time, you know, I was a single parent and I had two children. Today, I have four children. So because I kept going, I was able to have two extra kids <laughs> and loving it because they keep me on my toes today. Um, but there was a time and I never had any kind of injury before this. The only time I went to the hospital was to have my two children. And um, when this accident happened, I was in the hospital for about three days inpatient. I was life flighted to Shands Jacksonville. Um, an ear, nose, and throat uh, therapist put my face back together again. I had a hundred staples and stitches on my face and my head. Um, I because I hydroplaned. After I hydroplaned, I was ejected from my vehicle because I was not belted. Um, when I had my second child, I was three weeks postpartum when this accident happened, and um, my belly was very uncomfortable wearing the seatbelt. So after I had her, I also did not wear the seatbelt. So today I wear my seatbelt every day for all those out there wondering, I wear it every day. Um, but I was ejected from the vehicle because I did not wear the seatbelt. And um, so my body flew onto US-1 northbound. Um, so, and it, it's kind of a miracle how it all happened. You know, it was raining. Um, I, of course I hydroplaned, I couldn't see anything. Um, and it was more of a shock that happened, not a, 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 a blackout, but a shock because I don't remember after the hydroplane, I also don't remember going over the median. Um, I don't remember hitting, there was a, a school bus that was coming northbound and with no children, just a driver, oh. but my vehicle hit it. 
uh, three times. So it was like a ricochet action that happened. I was ejected from the vehicle because I was not belted. Um, anyhow, so after that happened, it's about after three o'clock in the afternoon where US-1, if you're familiar with 206 and, um, and that US-1 area, um, there's a ranch there. Well, there was no traffic at three something in the afternoon, which is usually unheard of. And, you know, the, 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 the jolt from me flying out of my car could have killed me, did not. Um, I could have been in the middle, I was in the middle of the road, a car could have rode over me, that didn't happen either. So I'm here today, hmm. um, you know, after having, you know, traumatic uh, injury to my brain, um, 100 staples and stitches to my head and my face. Um, and I've grown from that experience, wow. which, you know, to be on the other side of that helps me know that really I, there's just a purpose for me being here today and I'm grateful to be here. I don't take any of it for advantage. So when I'm working with individuals who seek out help, you know, I've been there, but my story is not their story. <clears throat> their story is unique to them and I honor them and what they've been through. Um, and sometimes self-disclosing parts of the story. I really don't go into too much detail with them, but I just let them know you can make it too. Wow. That's, I, I'm, it gives me chills thinking about that. What a powerful, powerful story. And the, the way that you've been able to reframe that and look at it from mm -hmm. as, as a gift, right. And as a an opportunity for growth, that's, that's pretty, mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty amazing. So, mm -hmm. I, that reminds me of mindset for a moment and, and mm -hmm. tell us how does mindset play a role in mental health? Mm -hmm. It really plays a role in everything because without mental health, what do you have? You know, um, there's a lot of studies that show how our, our mental health is, is attached to physical health, right? How, if you're not, thinking well, you can compromise your immune system and you can find, anyone can Google and find information regarding this. Mm -hmm. um, how about this? How about people who have had a long day at work and they work at a desk and they come home and they're so tired and they're just exhausted? What is that about, right? That's not physical exhaustion, it's mental exhaustion. And a lot of the times, um, you know, they might have, for example, tension in the shoulders, or maybe they hold tension in their back. So they're not physically doing something. It's the mind and it's translating that tension into a place in the body. So, you know, that, that is an example of, you know, mental health and how it impacts us in a physical level. So, and if that's the case, that's just a little bit of evidence. If you have a tension headache, that's another example. Yeah. Um, so because we know that, then what, what we do regarding our mindset is extremely important to all aspects of life, period. It's extremely important to all aspects of life. Um, one of my favorite stories is on Viktor Frankl. And Viktor Frankl, um, he has this powerful story. <laughs> uh, I love his story. And he, um, he was in the concentration camps and so was his family. And he was taken in as a prisoner of war. And he wrote this book called Man's Search for Meaning. Anyone can get it. And um, long story short, his family, his, his wife and child were taken away from him. And his thought process behind this was, even though I'm isolated and I'm taken as prisoner of war and I'm in this room and I'm not with my family, they cannot take away from me my thoughts what I focus on, what I choose to focus on. And that got him through. That got him through this prisoner of war situation and the hope of seeing his family again. So I won't you know, ruin the rest of the story, but you know, he was able to write the story and the story was bestseller forever. I mean, a lot of people have heard of man's search for meaning and it's because we all want to find the meaning, the purpose. Uh, so, so true. And to echo your words, I would highly encourage anyone that is watching and listening to this to go out and buy that book and read mm -hmm. it. It is mm -hmm. one of those books that I've gifted to others. And it, um, you know, there's certain, there's certain messages and certain books that just 
absolutely shake you to your core and open mm -hmm. your eyes. And mm -hmm. that was one of them. And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. so I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. But you know, it's interesting because that ties to what many of us are experiencing today in terms of the isolation, right? In right. terms of anxiety and mm -hmm. what, what's going on in the world today. So I wanted to ask you, what are some of the early warning signs of, of anxiety? And what are the specific actions that we can take to manage it? Well, you know, based on what you were saying, it's really about our perception, how we perceive our life, what we perceive is happening to us that can create these feelings of not feeling in control, right? Not having power. Um, and that is a sign, right? When you're feeling like I have to control something and it could be as simple as now you're irritable and yelling at your children where you weren't or you're arguing with your spouse where that was not happening before. Um, it can easily happen that way subconsciously where we're not aware of it. That's why awareness is huge. Um, and, and all the things that we've spoken about really all work together because awareness is part of mindset and be mindful of where are your thoughts right now? What, what are you thinking? Because if you're not aware and don't have a thumb on those thoughts, remember we have over 60,000 thoughts in a day, humans and 90% are negative. So what's happening up here? If you're not aware, you can't guide them. I like to say that's like an air traffic controller. Like we need to be saying, no, nope, you're going over here. No, you're not true. You go over there. So it's just a matter of having, you know, that awareness, knowing where our thoughts are and is it true? And I like to say, ask the F word. Is it the right F word? Is it a feeling or is it a fact? Mm. Because if it's just a feeling, you really have to say, maybe I need to find something else to think about that's helpful to me um, if you identify that this feeling is harmful. And the way you prove that it's a fact is by saying, can I prove this with 100% certainty? If you can, because sometimes people say, yeah, it, it's a fact, but can you prove it with 100% certainty? That, that's the difference. That will let you know that that is a fact. But if you discover it's a feeling, then the, the follow-up question is, okay, is this harmful or helpful? And if it's harmful, find a helpful thought or feeling to replace it with. And that's as simple as the process is because most people believe the thoughts they have and thoughts lie. And most people don't realize that thoughts lie. They think because I have the thought, it must be true. And that's a lie. So, so Liz, what are some, some things that we can do to try to stop and recognize those thoughts because th they just happen right with the number of thoughts that sure. that we're thinking about in mm -hmm. a in a given day in 24 hours and we all live active lives and these thoughts are just mm -hmm. happening what can we do grounding techniques are great um i like to tell people you know play a little game with yourself because guess when that happens for most of us if you're in florida you're driving and a lot of the times when you're driving, boop, so the thoughts are just kind of hijacked and you don't even realize you get to your destination and you're like, oh, I had to stop at the grocery store. I'm home already. I'm at work already. Um, and that's a prime example of not being aware of your thoughts. Why? Because our body has memory and most people don't realize the body has memory, somatic memories when you don't have to think about riding a bike, you just ride the bike. You don't have to think about driving, you just drive the bike because your body's memory is in control. Mm -hmm. And because the body's memory is in control when we're driving, your mind is traveling. So it's important to practice when you're driving. Okay, I'm holding onto my steering wheel right now. Feel the steering wheel. Use all your senses to be in the moment of driving, which is, the pressure of your hand on the steering wheel. What is the texture of that steering wheel? Is it hot? Is it cold? Do you, are your hands sweaty? Um, feeling the weight of your body on your seat um, is another way to ground yourself. Um, maybe you have their AC running. Maybe you have the window open and your hair is kind of flowing. Um, those are the kind of things that will ground you to your current experience and take you out of the mind travel. You can't do two at one time. You can't travel in the mind and you can't be present. So it forces you to be here. And then no longer are you struggling with mind traveling. Interesting. 
How about meditation? Is that something that you that you do yourself? And is that something that you suggest or recommend to others? Meditation is highly recommended. Um, and here's why. 60,000 thoughts. Everyone's going to go away today and they're going to know over 60,000 thoughts in a day, 90% are negative. Don't you want to tell it what to think about? We want to be in control of that program. We want to program it to say, I want peace. I want to feel this peace today. I deserve the peace I feel in this moment. We want to program ourselves instead of letting the mind do whatever and being mindful, having a practice of meditation will help you do that. And for those people who are watching who think meditation is, you know, hours long or has to be, you know, a whole day affair, it really, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, how much do you think that your mental health and physical health is worth? Hmm. Right? You pencil in other people in your day, we need to pencil in ourselves in our calendar, pencil yourself in. Yeah, great, great suggestion. <clears throat> I couldn't agree with you more on that one. So let's talk about the isolation for a moment and the fact that right now many of us are working from our homes we're not mm -hmm. going into the office we're not going into uh, mm -hmm. other types of places of business on a regular uh, basis the way that we were and we're trying to figure out you know how do we connect with one another like we're doing today on zoom as an example right so what what is the um, what happens during isolation and what is the importance of connection as humans we are hardwired to connect period. We're hardwired to connect. So, you know, I definitely say, you know, physical distancing and social distancing are two different things. We need to remain social and keeping to our normal routine as much as possible is important. Also to feeling like there is some level of control. Like we mentioned earlier that, you know, sometimes people don't realize, okay, what am I doing that's different? How do I know if I'm experiencing anxiety uh, over this situation? So being able to connect and keep as much as your routine going as possible is crucial. And sometimes people just, you know, the, the brain has three responses, the fight, flight, or freeze. So each one of us has a different way of responding. There's an order to that, but some people might skip that and just freeze and not know, okay, I don't, I don't know what to do. Like, if I'm not leaving my house every day, I just don't know what that would look like. And that's okay. It's just about experimenting, being forgiving with yourself, be you know, gracious with yourself, allow yourself a learning curve, and be creative with how you continue to move forward in this current time. In, for example, if you have a business meeting over Zoom or over the phone, um, if you wanna see friends and kind of hang out and pal around, you can do that over the phone. You can do that you know, within a certain amount of distance. Um, you don't have to disconnect. We want to connect. We want to stay connected with our people. Um, and keeping to your regular routine through a creative outlet will allow you to do that. Mm -hmm. So some parents are, are homeschooling at home. You know, uh, keeping things uh, small and short, you know, instead of like a long school day. We're not in school. That's going to be a conflict, right? So we're going to have to do maybe education in like little burst because even the children are trying to adapt to this. So they're not going to, you know, their brain is thinking, I'm home. This is when I relax and, and, I, and I hang out. Why do I have to do schoolwork? So these are other transitions to keep in mind. And you really have to find what's the perfect recipe for you and your family. Very good. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. You're welcome. So how has the current situation changed your business and what what types of opportunities do you see out of this? So what are you doing differently and where do you see growth happening in your practice? So um Prior to this virus and quarantine, I was, my practice was 50% online. I have a private practice in St. Augustine and um, seeing some folks there and then seeing people online. Um, and online by HIPAA compliant platform, which is a secure way to have a session and keep it private. So after this, um, 
what I've been able to do is move over my entire practice online. I still maintain my office in St. Augustine. So when we're out of this uh, quarantine, the folks that I'm working with have the opportunity to, to continue online. They have the opportunity to come into the office. They have the opportunity to maybe have a selection of the two because transportation sometimes can be an issue. Uh, so whatever the situation is, I definitely have opportunities for those people. And moving forward, um, I'm just gonna continue offering the online service, but it's definitely offered opportunity for those people who were skeptical about um, how therapy online would work to come on in and, and, and try it out. And, and what kind of reception have you received? So up to this point, 50% was online, but now a, a, a 100%. larger, really, mm -hmm. yeah, 100%. So it, mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, those that maybe weren't doing online types of services, is mm -hmm. it, is it something that they're embracing? Yes. They were embracing and they're actually appreciating it. You know, most of them would say, well, you know, I hope you're keeping safe. Thank you so much. They don't worry about having to go out and, you know, be around situations that might not be safe or maybe that they feel like they don't have control or they don't have a mask or they don't have this. They don't have to worry about that. And honestly, when I'm working with individuals, the last thing I want to do is create more stress and worry. <laughs> I'm very flexible when I'm working with people. I know that if someone's reaching out for therapy, there's something already going on. I do not want to add to what's going on. I, I work with people, I'm very flexible, I'm open to people and, and what it is that they're currently experiencing, and we're always looking for solution. I'm, I'm very solution focused in my therapy. Good, very nice. So before I ask you my final question, where can we go to learn more about you? How can we engage with you? And what is the best way to absorb your content and be able to schedule an appointment if we see fit. Absolutely. So my, um, I have a website at uh, brainbasedtherapist.com. I also am online. You can find me on Instagram or Facebook at brainbasedtherapist as well. And, um, and I usually uh, put some content up there that's useful to folks. And I try to keep that updated as much as I can, as well as my blog um, online at brainbasedtherapist. And um, you can send me a message off of my website. I would be glad to respond to any messages that you might have. I also have an email list. If you, there's a space on my uh, website to leave your email. So if you want a newsletter from me, you want some brain-based uh, therapy information, it's not therapy, but it's just information that will help you live a better life. And um, therapy has a different environment, a different feel altogether. Therapy is not done over any kind of social media or any website. So okay. just that disclosure. <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, we'll make sure that we put the contact information in the show notes here as well. So I appreciate that. So here is my final question. Absolutely. What is one piece of advice that you've received that had a massive impact on your life? Um, I love that question. My sixth grade teacher, PS81 in New York, her name is Miss Greenberg. Hmm. She said, you can do anything that you wanna do. And she has highly influenced me. And I believe moving forward, you know, we, influence people. Everyone who comes into our life, one way or another, we influence them. So I'm just trying to do my part. Love that. What a great piece of advice. And obviously one mm -hmm. that you have uh, certainly been following. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Well, that's wonderful. Well, I, I wanted to thank you so much for joining us on Business Minds Coffee Chat today. I'm grateful for you and I appreciate you taking the time to be here with us. Thank you so much for having me, Jay. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, it's been a pleasure. And for all of you, thank you for watching. And if you found value in this episode, please like and share with your friends. And until next time, stay healthy and optimistic. Keep learning and growing. And remember that transformative change in your life and business begins with you. And nothing happens until you take action. 
Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.